I find it really interesting at the same time, I know that taking breaks are essential for these people. And that's something you did when you were making Limelight Journey. You actually stopped during the pandemic. Can you talk a little bit about that? What made you stop? And then what made you start up? And when do you feel like you can continue this journey and telling your story? Yeah, it's really interesting when we tell our stories, right? The amount of times I've said the sentence, Limelight Journey is the story of how for 30 years I lived with undiagnosed Lyme disease, this mysterious chronic illness, but, but you know, and after a while, it's like, it's a track in your head. Not even after a while, after a while you become conscious that it's a track in your head, but after you say it once or twice, it's a track in your head. <laughs> Don't be fooled at the, you know, the, by the, like the power of our minds to, create stories for ourselves. So I had to stop because I, I was living in the story still. So even though my body does not show Lyme disease anymore, I do not have any, nothing shows up with Western medical doctors, energetic testing, BAH, nothing shows. Um, I did, um, you know, I'll, I'll get muscle tested. I did that thing where you put your hand in the pod to do the, um, Thingies. Yep. Thingies. Very scientific. Thingies. No, Zyto, a cyber, right, like yeah, all the those. Right, yeah, the, the right, right machine, machines and right? Vega machines. Yeah. And EAVs. Yeah. Yep. None of that comes up for me. What still comes up for me is viral stuff. So I'm still mm -hmm. dealing, dealing with that. And which is much better since I've learned to slow down a little bit. <laughs> but, um, but I was living as if I still had uh, something that could kill me. So it's really interesting. People are like, oh my God, you must be so happy. You don't have Lyme anymore. Do you feel amazing? And I'm like, first of all, I have 760 other things to deal with <laughs> that happened to my body and my mind along the way. And, and also you live in the paradigm of fight or flight and illness. So it's yeah. like the story I wanted to tell was not about being sick with Lyme disease because the more I reinforced it, in my brain, the more I lived, still lived in it. So it took me a, the whole pandemic to realize that's what was happening. And I had met some people along the way who were, were telling their stories as well. And then, or who had had Lyme, who I reached out to and they connected with me. And I'm like, so what are you doing with it? They're like, oh, nothing. I've exited that scene. Like I'm not telling mm -hmm. the story. And I was like, no, all right, I'm going to do it. He's, I, you know, <laughs> And I was like, that guy's not strong enough to tell his story. Meanwhile, it's like, that guy knows exactly what he's doing. And yep. so, so, uh, you know, again, going back to thing that gives me my power that could also take me down is never taking no for an answer. And I can't do it with myself either. So I set out to do something. I said I was going to do something. I take my word very seriously. So at one point, what I did again, circling back to what we talked about before it's not necessarily the destination or where you're headed or in the case of, you know, my life's purpose, what I'm meant to do. How are you, what are the steps you're taking along the way? And what's the energy behind the movement? So I was frantically trying to finish something and fit it into a little box that would fit for Amazon or Netflix <laughs> or HBO mm -hmm. or a producer or other documentarian friends of mine. And, you know, everyone's given me advice, same thing with Lyme or same thing when I didn't know what I had. Didn't you try this? Maybe that, maybe it's all in your head. Da, da, da. You should swim. Are you taking probiotics? And it's like, oh my God, like go away. So I hit the same wall with producing this. And what I realized was I was trying to tell the story and, and be the journey for everyone else, but myself. And, you know, any good documentary that where you're, where the person telling it is the subject, it has to come from your heart because, you know, people can snip out a lie a million miles away. And like, even if that lie or that, if I glossed it over or made it a certain way to be marketable, that's, it's not my brand. My brand is, I don't care what you think. And I'm putting this on YouTube for free because I would be dead if I did what other people told me to do. If I went by the books, if I did what statistics said. So I realized that I wasn't, I wasn't in, in the car as myself, you know, I might've been driving, but like, I did not know where I was going. I was just like, 
on gas. <laughs> Let's go. Let's get wherever we're going. And so it, the pandemic, like for so many other people, forced me to go even more slowly than I had to with Lyme. Um, Cause I still had so much healing to do. And I'm sure, you know, next year when we do this again, I'll be like <laughs> that, that interview I did with you in 2021, I was clueless, but um, cause you keep learning and you keep evolving if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> 